This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Set up your business with a 90-day free trial from Shopify by following the link below. Humans are a very successful species. In the past 100 years alone, our population has grown from around 2 billion to over 7.5 billion. Just 20 years ago, our population was only 6 billion. Our species has expanded tremendously over the course of our time on Earth, and we now inhabit many vastly different environments around the globe. There's very little that the human race can't overcome, and that's led some to ask the question, are we too successful? Will there come a point at which we simply have too many mouths to feed and not enough food to go around? In this episode, we'll examine the current state of food production around the world and determine roughly how many humans our agriculture is capable of supporting. Let's get one thing out of the way up front. We're nowhere near the Earth becoming overpopulated. The only people who make this claim are acting in bad faith, usually to push reprehensible agendas like eugenics. Depending on the population models you use, the planet's carrying capacity could be up to 40 billion people. It's just a matter of how those people consume. Now, let's take a look at the current state of agriculture and hunger around the world. As of 2018, about 800 million people around the world experienced a lack of sufficiently nutritious food, earning them the designation hungry. Most of these people live in regions with underdeveloped agricultural systems like Sub-Saharan Africa. But a lack of agricultural infrastructure is only part of the problem. Regions that are embroiled in conflict or that have high levels of poverty also suffer from widespread hunger. War leads to poverty, poverty to hunger, and hunger reinforces poverty. It's a deadly cycle that is very difficult to break. But even while nearly a billion people lack reliable access to nutritious food, global food production is humming along nicely. It's estimated that the world's farmers produce enough food to feed one and a half times the total world population. That's over 10 billion people, a population we're not expected to reach for another 30 years at least. If we produce that much food, why do so many people suffer hunger and starvation? This is a multifaceted problem. Waste, inefficient distribution, and climate change all play major roles in preventing the efficient disbursement of food to the world's at-risk populations. Let's start with the problem of waste. It's estimated that globally, 30 to 40% of all food is wasted. That is a massive amount of food. The reasons for this waste vary by country. India, for example, loses 30 to 40% of their fresh produce because they lack cold storage infrastructure in many regions. In other countries like the US, famous for its massive portions, much of the waste comes from people simply throwing away large amounts of food because they have too much on their plate. And large grocery chains just dump excess food because it's cheaper than transporting it to places that could put it to good use. This is where distribution comes in. Why repackage and distribute unused food if there's not a financial incentive to do so? In recent months, we've seen American farmers leave mountains of potatoes to rot and dump hundreds of gallons of milk down the drain because the market dried up. Then there's the looming threat of climate change. We're already beginning to see the adverse effects of a rapidly changing global climate, most notably with more violent weather, the spread of disease, and the destruction of crops. It's estimated that by 2050, the United States Midwest will see at least a 20% decline in corn yields, as will Indonesia, and Brazil will see a 16% reduction. Some colder regions will become too warm to support cold weather crops, warmer areas will become too hot, and coastal regions will experience too much rain. Of course, there will be some parts of the world that actually become more hospitable to some crops, but these will not be enough to offset the loss of production in other regions. Now we see the real heart of the problem. We already produce enough food to feed the entire world population, but if we don't safeguard and update our existing methods of food production and the population continues to grow as projected, the same old problems of waste, distribution, and climate change will make it even more difficult to keep everyone fed. So, what kind of solutions do we have? For starters, we could transition to a less environmentally damaging source of protein. Meat animals, especially cows, are a major contributor to climate change. Add to this the fact that they require large amounts of land and food themselves, not to mention the inhumane nature of the animal agriculture industry, and you've got a strong argument to transition to more efficient and humane sources of protein. Or at least replace red meat with poultry, which is much less environmentally damaging. Another promising advancement in farming is the development of indoor vertical farms. These highly productive farms grow all sorts of nutritious foods in a climate-controlled environment where they're protected from the elements, and can be installed right in densely populated hubs like major cities, making distribution a much simpler process. Vertical farms also take up much less space than traditional outdoor farms because they're contained within buildings and plant upwards instead of outwards. Regarding waste and distribution, well, that depends on the country. Places that lack refrigeration could obviously make an investment in that area. But in wealthy countries like the US, it's a bit more difficult. The US produces a huge amount of food, and much of it is wasted simply because of our extravagant lifestyle. We have a major obesity problem in America, but we also have over 37 million people going hungry. Coincidentally, that's the same number as the amount of Americans living in poverty. As we saw earlier, poverty and hunger is a self-reinforcing cycle, 
One easy step we could take is mandating that all large grocery chains donate their unsold food to homeless shelters, soup kitchens, and other charitable groups. There is no reason for tens of thousands of tons of food to end up in dumpsters behind the store. One final method to help reduce local hunger and improve community resiliency is to develop mutual aid programs. Mutual aid, in a nutshell, means looking out for those in your community, every person being willing to help every other person when they need it. Take the Seattle nonprofit City Fruit, for example. The city of Seattle has tons of fruit trees, and much of the fruit those trees produce ended up rotting on the ground, not doing anyone any good. A group of people saw a way to help fulfill a need, and started collecting fruit from around the city and distributing it to communities that lacked access to nutritional food. Every year, City Fruit collects and distributes tens of thousands of pounds of nutritious local fruit, and helps keep their community healthy and resilient. This type of local organizing can be done around the world, identifying useful local resources and building systems of mutual aid to strengthen communities. This kind of compassionate and egalitarian work, combined with investment in new, climate-proof farming techniques, could drastically reduce the number of people suffering from hunger the world over. We already produce all the food we need. It's just a matter of setting our priorities straight and making sure we invest in the means to distribute food to the people that currently don't have the access they need. It'll take a lot of compassion and hard work, but we humans are pretty inventive. If you're one of those people with big ideas that you want to turn into your full-time gig, you can turn that idea into a thriving business with Shopify. Shopify is your one-stop shop for creating a sleek, modern online business with no coding skills required. You can build your brand, create a name and logo, set up an online store, handle marketing, and keep up with your business finances. There's a reason Shopify is trusted by over a million merchants around the world. It's super simple. No hassle, no headaches, and a professional business you can be proud of. I'm living proof. I use Shopify to power my online merch store, and it's super easy. Turn your big idea into an online business and help support Second Thought while you're at it. Visit shopify.com slash free dash trial slash second thought and start your 90 day free trial today.